Yo, it's your boy OZ, Liner Notes Season 1. And, and so what I see you doing is supporting people and really showing people like, yo, like, it's cool to rep some Charged Up Noah O stuff. It's cool to put on Mama Joe's that collection. Like, it's from that angle, you know, not even to cut you off from that angle, because that is what you asked. Like, I feel like, um, like, when, when even if you're, like, physically the people aren't there with you as you're, you're, like, taking steps and doing what you're doing, in essence, it's cool to have that feeling. Like, and that's where, like, the merch and the CDs and, and all. Matter of fact, it's like, like different, sh you know, like having, I brought different merch from different people. Like I've got, some of them are dusty cause I got them hanging up in my studio, oh but my it's like God. cooler. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Illa Styles. Illa here, Styles. Yeah. He about to drop another project. This is this his last one. This right man here. showed up to an interview about himself with you know other saying? people's music, yo. Isaiah Queen's Zaya last Queen. project, yep. Hypnomonic. Real life. He gave me this at, 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 an, at um, one of the rap elites, but it's like, I got a whole bunch. And this is why I got it to be able to, to 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 show somebody like yo look, that's that's Michael Millions and Radio B. You wow, know what I'm saying I've what never seen pop? this one actually. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, I got wild. I got two of them. Might have to give you one. You, you, I, I might have to. No. Yeah. I wanted to reach out to you for this first season of Liner Notes. Um, we don't talk a lot, but when we talk, like it's about moving upwards and, and, and doing and creating. And so this isn't our actual first convo on here, RVA. Like we've, we've talked on our, our Instagram live stories one time. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to get you back for the first official season. We've talked a lot. We've talked, well, you know what, we have talked a lot. I take few, that back. I've been in a few shows. That's true. That's like true. fresh off the stage conversations, like. Okay, we've talked a lot. Yeah. We're friends. Yeah, we, we're friends. All right, we're friends. <laughs> um, but I definitely wanted to have you on for season one of Liner Notes. Um, Appreciate that, bro. No problem, man. And, and, and I wanted you on A, because I like you. I think we have good conversations. But more importantly to the viewers, not to me, but more importantly, like, you're somebody who I look around in Richmond and, and is doing things, trying to accomplish things, trying to push boundaries. Um, so I kind of just want to start talking about you as an artist first, for real. Gotcha. Um, wh why rap? Why are you a rapper? That's, that's, it seems like that's an obvious question, but that's like... Yeah, because you could have been playing like, cello. It came like... I don't want to say it came out of nowhere because like music always been in me mm -hmm. and like rhyming and hip hop. I was introduced to hip hop. I would say like, like officially knowing what I was listening to about seven years old. You know what I'm saying? But like, it was always in me. I was always listening from like Snoop Dogg, Doggy Style as far back as I can remember. And then, and then like trickling into the Bone Thugs and Harmony. But I'm saying all that because it's like during that time it was brewing, but I didn't know like, I didn't know no, you know what I'm saying? And then like, I was more fascinated with the studio and, the, and the, I'm an engineer. So that's, that's always what I wanted to be. I kind of always wanted to DJ too, but um, getting fascinated into that world and working with other artists, I realized it was in me, you know what I'm saying? To like be a writer. That's the main issue, not to piggyback. I didn't write enough. And once I started writing, I realized that like, I was beyond where I was supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's really why I started rapping because it was like, yo, you, you should have been rapping and or you're supposed to be rapping. You I, know what I'm saying? For myself, like I found that like, I noticed that I was pretty good at mimicking rappers and like redoing cadences and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, is that kind of how you stumbled on to your love for rap? And then, you know, besides like doggy style, like what were the first bits of, of rap and hip hop that you chose to like, 
be a fan of? I really, like you were just saying, mimicking, like, I remember writing down, like, Biggie lyrics, like, just so I can come back and, and have the, come back and then study the cadences and, and the delivery more. So it's like I was memorizing the word and then, like, studying the cadence, like, from a performance standpoint. So it's like, yeah, technically, yeah. I, like I told you, I didn't realize what I was doing, but the whole time I've been I've been studying music since a kid and, like, breaking down, like you said, deliveries, deliveries cadences, different styles, like wordplay. Um, and, and that part of it is more important to me now than I, than I realized, because like I said, I, I didn't even realize I was paying attention to that much, you know what I'm saying? Being able to break it down to a science and then adding the math and the history to it, and then it's like, yeah, you know what I mean? Don't ask me for favors no more. Believe it or not, I listen to a lot of um, salsa. I'm half Panamanian, so I listen to a lot of salsa and calypso. I'm half Jamaican, so I listen to a lot of reggae, um, R&B a little bit, or a lot of bit sometimes, but really it's just like in a, when you're in, in them pockets, and, and right now I'm trying to actually tap into jazz more. I always listen to it in essence, but it wasn't like, I, didn't, I don't follow jazz artists or know too many uh, that aren't famous, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I feel like there's like a, a language in, in in jazz that that's like unsaid obviously it's like an unspoken language and when you tap into it it brings out like that true you know it's like it's crazy i've been listening to it lately and there's a lot of storytelling involved like i said that, that i hear that i'm not really hearing so who are you like, listening to like right now well believe it or not it was it was more so on like a, almost every documentary i see you know what i'm saying that's what you hear in the background in the beginning of documentaries like and, and it was me like studying that aspect like yo if i do a documentary or a video i want it to start out like this where it's like you don't hear no words you just hear the music in the background and then it's like you're able to pretty much tell yourself what's going on and the music helps you do that you know what i'm saying it's like we, we see these three minute long intros and we're like by the time the intro is done, you, you know what you're in for. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's the part of it I'm trying to figure out. Because it's like that intro to an album, for instance, like that first song is like if somebody could tap into the first 30 seconds and then it's like, whoo, I can't wait to hear that last song. Is, you is know the, you did it. Is the album opener, is it supposed to be a preface for like what's to come? Or how do you view like putting together and sequencing a project in in the album situation i would say yes because it's like we, we got i mean people say eps or albums or whatever but in today's day it's like you got mixtapes eps people dropping five six song tracks i mean projects but it's like when you really drop in an album like it's my first album my second album my third album like the first song should definitely if if it's not about to take you where you're about to go even if you switch the style up, if the first song isn't about to take you where you're going, it should at least, like, say for, like, a second, third album, you should be able to hear, like, the past few albums in it. You know what I'm saying? It should, you know, you shouldn't be so thrown off on an intro to where you're like, I ain't feeling this project. Like, if you listen to an intro and you're like, I don't like this, you fucked up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't like, have to waste your time with the rest of the album. Period. <laughs> like, I, I don't even want to click, I don't even want to skip it. And I'm just going to hit stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, right. <laughs> It actually started with my mom. Like I went grocery shopping with her and was starting to see all of the all, all the options that are out there. I just was like, yo, like I can make all kinds of pretzels. I would come up with a bunch of cravings and then start selling them at work. Like I spent a lot of time like making sure every detail is like perfect. I just knew whatever was gonna come out was gonna be real because like I swear, I, I live and breathe this, like, hand on the creations. It was really important for us to be able to provide something for our vegan community, gluten-free community, our sugar-free community. The pretzels are like pretzel ladies. The cake pops are lady cakes. So just kind of trying to pour into that feminine energy and that, you know, I can have kids and still own my own business. Like, I can do it all. coming from Newport News. Like, what is it about the scene, uh, the music scene here in Richmond that, that 
I guess allowed you to kind of be part of it, you know, brought you in. You, you, what's that experience been like? For me, at one point, I felt like, you know, not to say that I was caught into the idea of how there's no scene in Virginia. You know what I'm saying? Not even to speak Richmond, but just Virginia in general. It's like I was caught into that idea. It's like, yo, there's, there's nothing here, this and this and that. But it's like I realized that that idea is only captured because people take so much from here and they go everywhere else. And it's like me me coming to Richmond in comparison to say I'm from Newport News or me being been to Virginia Beach, Norfolk, all over. It's 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 more of a melting pot of like so many different cultures. You know what I'm saying? Like 757, it's a lot of military. So it's military from all over, people from all over the place coming from everywhere here. I would say we got, you know, you got Fort Lee, you got a little bit of influences of people coming from outside, but there's more culture here in the aspect of like people and families who've been here, who, who've been living here for a while. And like, when you talk to those people and, and they tell you the story of, of this area, not just per se Richmond, it's a lot, it's a lot to dig into. And it's like the openness in the, in the um, atmosphere of like, say the, the music, it's like, it seems like it's ever growing. So people are, naturally like wanting to hear more or willing to help because they've they've seen what it was like before and they see where it's going especially right now i know a lot of people that's like that's been here doing it they they telling me all the time like yo thank you for everything you do bro and and i take that as like they see what's going on they see the changes that are happening and they see how we can change what's happening you know what i'm saying and and that's what i like most about this area because you it's like I said, it's the capital, so by default, it's more eyes. You know what I'm saying? And, and you can feel that being here in comparison to being in other places. That's another thing that, like, I noticed about you, too, is, like, you, you I did, obviously didn't know you before you got to Richmond, but when I started to learn about you, I saw how many other artists that you were excited to support. You know what I mean? Like, you were an engaged, uh, active participant in, like, the community, um, and so... I, I really like that aspect. Like, what do you, what do you envision for like the music scene? Like, I, what's what's your goal of this? I mean, obviously, I'm a, I'm an artist myself. So, I mean, the goal for me is is to be able to be in an environment and or in like an ecosystem type situation where you know what you put in, other people are putting in, and then like what you're able to take out, other people are able to take out. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like a little bit past networking because it's like like the metaphor of the internet, like it, the network is there, but it doesn't work unless you build websites and figure out different ways to, you know, um, network and connect with different sites. You know what I'm saying? Like my brand, your brand, you know what I'm saying? It's not just like one. So it's like, um, I kind of feel like I, I I I lost the question when I started. It's okay. Talking. It was uh, yeah. I'm I'm trying to figure out like my own like answer to this question. But it was like, uh, you, what what do you want like Richmond to be as far as the music scene? Like, like because you know you're right. I think kind of cultivating a lot of like rich people around you that mm -hmm. everybody benefits, exactly. but you're also all working towards the same goal. Is right. like, it's it's. I th that's my goal, at least. You know what I'm saying? And and so what I see you doing is supporting people and really showing people like, yo, like, it's cool to rep some Charged Up Noah O stuff. It's cool to put on Mama Joe's that collection. Like, it's from that angle, you know, not even to cut you off from that angle, because that is what you asked. Like, I feel like, um, like, when, when even if you're, like, physically the people aren't there with you as you're, you're like, taking steps and doing what you're doing, in essence it's cool to have that feeling like and that's where like the merch and the cds and, and all. matter of fact it's like like different sh you know like having i brought different merch from different people like i've got some of them are dusty because i got them hanging up in my studio oh but my it's like God. cooler you know what i'm saying yeah, Ellis styles, Ellis here, styles. Yeah. he about to drop another project this is this is last one this right man there. showed up to an interview about himself with you know other people's music yo Isaiah queen's Zaya last queen. project yep. hypnomonic Real life, he gave me this at at at, 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 an, at um one of the rap elites. But it's like I got a whole bunch, and this is why I got it to be able to to to, to show somebody like yo, look, that's that's Michael Millions and Radio B. 
Wow. You know what I'm saying? I've one never seen this one, actually. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, got, I got two of them. Might have to give you one. You, you, I, I might have to. No, yeah, <laughs> nah, seriously, you, you can take that one. Man, that's, yo, that's cool. Okay, that's, that's cool. I didn't expect somebody to show up with other people's stuff. Like, that's pretty fire, man. Yeah. Your last like full project in theory was 2016, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, since then, yeah, that one, boom, shotgun. No, it wasn't. My last full project was, was all my life. Oh, my bad. That's my. That's actually technically my first first full project. Was that 2016? That like, was that was 2016, and then all my life was, was 2019. 19. My bad. Okay. Now you good? So from 2019 to now, you haven't been quiet. You haven't been quiet. You've been on a bunch of songs, including songs we've done together yeah, yeah. Uh, for Anthem Symbol. Yeah. You, uh, from most recently, were on a song La La with Vintage, who mm -hmm. is himself a, a heavy hitter in Richmond. Like, in which, real quick, a lot of people keep asking me, you know, like, your song is that that is Vintage song. That's Vintage song. He, he featured me on it. You know what I'm saying? And it's like it's it's cool that you know, like the way I promote shit, people might just look over the next person presume that it's mine you know what i'm saying but that that's vintage track and i was blessed to be on it how did how did that come about to be honest with you we we was in a studio and as a matter of fact um we was about to go to to one of the the um world mc ciphers that we was in that's what it was and he he we was just playing we, what we were doing was listening to other beats that wasn't for what we was about to do just to kind of like have our brains, you know, cool. And he played that beat, and I was like, I like that one, bro. I need you to send me. This, this, the typical story is like, I like that. Send me that. This like, is my email. He's like, oh, all right, say less, bro. Yo, if you want to get on that, you can get, I got a hook and everything. You know what I'm saying? Then he spit the hook, and I was like, done. And then the next day, I, I called him. I was like, yo, look, I'm about to email you something. You know what I'm saying? I tried my hardest to make it seem like it wasn't that, but. That song came together real sweet. You know what I'm saying? It, it's kind of like it's kind of like a smoking song because it says la la, but it's more so in the aspect of like feeling good. Like I'm in la la land. You know what I'm saying? So it's it, we played off of like the smoke aspect, but it wasn't that wasn't the angle. So you fork double entendre. Yeah. yeah. Ooh yeah. You're, you're in a bracket style challenge against 64 other MCs. Now, granted, each MC only has to battle one person at a time, so it's not like you're battling 63 people. I, but I went against, what, seven people? Sure, like but that. you know what? Every time you gotta come out a winner. How did your verses from the first one to the last one change as you approached it? Because I'm sure percent pure it, honesty right here. My first two verses that I used, because I what it was a six or seven, my first two verses that I used were old, were recycled verses. And technically, I would say they weren't recycled because I never like recorded the verses, but they were like verses I've used in previous ciphers. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And my mind state going into it was like, it was more fun. You know what I'm saying? It was like, yo, this is dope. Pandemic, we rapping. You know what I'm saying? I felt like bet 90% of the people did that. 90. I'm sure people did write, but 90% already had plenty of raps and they were just excited to, to record it, you know what I'm saying? But then as it went on and you know, like you're listening to the commentary from like radio and them and, and, and they actually heard some of the people like, yo, some of the stuff sounded recycled and people aren't coming at each other, not saying any names. Then that's when I was like, all right, you know what I'm saying? And not even going to mention what weeks or when it was, but it was a certain week when I was just like, it went from like, boom to bam and then it was just from then on we was we was coming at each other's necks like you know what i'm saying like it was, it was sweet everybody got their uh everybody got their feet wet and realized okay we gotta we gotta come a little harder plus you Absolutely. start you start weeding out the first round or two yeah it is it is better competition as yeah. you get going so yeah um that's that's dope yo what uh how often are you working on music i mean i i know you have a family a young child like what's i'm in 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 recent times i'm not working on music as much as a i would like to or b as much as people think but like i'm definitely always like working towards like for instance performances or like 
different events that I've been um, doing. Like, um, I'm from Newport News. I, I graduated high school in 2003. Um, I've never performed in for, for none of my friends from school, you know what I'm saying? Like, most of my friends from school kind of like, they, they see I do music and it's kind of like that. Oh yeah, either like, they, they presume that I've been doing it, so it's like this story, like, oh he been doing it, da, 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 when I actually haven't. Or it's like, this idea that I'm on and I'm like, oh he's on, he, I was doing it. So it's like, that's enough support for, for a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? Some people, unless you literally like, hold their hand and show them how to support then then you're not going to get the support you want at least like they might be supporting but you're not going to feel it the way you, you think it's supposed to be so to make a long story short um one of my friends recently passed away and and i had like like i'm like yo you know what we need to all get back together like how we used to and, and link up and just enjoy our, our time together so i put together this uh this neighborhood I, that I lived in in Newport News is called Summer Lake. So I put together this event called Summer Lake and Friends, where it's like, it started out to where it was like all my friends that's ever been to my house in Summer Lake or that's been affiliated in some way, we're gonna have this party, you're invited. Make a long story short, it started out to where it was just gonna be a few friends to where it, you know, it's a whole backyard, 50, 60 people. And I performed for them, you know what I'm saying? And so, this coming up matter of fact last the last time i was supposed to come here was you know what i'm saying we we was partying and, and getting it in so this oh, week yeah, that's what <laughs> this weekend is uh gonna be our third event that we've done you know what i'm saying so what i'm doing is i'm bringing all my friends together i'm also in in the process of introducing them to my music officially so now it's like when I when I when I drop or when I do shows, I can have that support from back home. You know what I'm saying? It didn't used to be there, so and it mean it actually means a lot. And it was pretty sweet to be able to like, you know, we had an all white party in my backyard where I grew up, graduated where I started school, graduated school. We're in the backyard. I'm performing. It, it was pretty sweet. Had the baby there. It's like a whole a, a whole circle. You know what I mean? Like yeah. coming back as a in a different stage of your life. Definitely. So I'm saying, I've mentioned all that to say, because you asked, like, what, what was I doing? It's like, I'm cultivating right now, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, putting it all together, because when I, when, I, when I drop next, it's going to be, like, for me, not, not per standard or definition, but for me, it's going to be the way it's supposed to be. But now, you know, I feel like I, I need to... um visit more studios because you know I, I got my own studio and it's like that's my shit you know what i'm saying but if, if i can get into another vibe then that might you know that will not might that will bring out a different element you know what i'm saying well welcome to my studio this is nice it's a little bit uh organized differently right I, like, now. I like i like the way you got it like yeah man that's definitely like my rap corner over there that's like that's my motivation area you can see like all my favorite albums and stuff and yeah that's it's the vibe. Are those like literally your favorite albums, or are those just the ones you just like? Oh no, nah, man! I I def I only buy albums if I really like them. Like for me to buy an album, that's my hard-earned money. And so if I'm spending, well, back in the day on a CD it was like thirteen or fourteen dollars. Right, but right, if I'm putting right. four, you better have a good album. It can't just be a single that facts, I'm buying. Facts. So all of those, man, from I mean John Mayer to The Roots to Skills and D'Angelo. Shout out to Richmond. Um, Zoe Clips, which is another Virginia artist. Like That's crazy. all of those. I learned everything I know about cocaine from Clips, from that record right there. That, that Dave Chappelle block party. Yes. That, um, you know, the Fugees just, just performed again, right? Yeah. They said that that was their last time performing. Wow. When they performed at the Dave Chappelle block party. Yeah. So I remember watching that movie in the theater. Yeah. That's oh, crazy. With this guy. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, yeah, so, uh, no, thank you, welcome to the studio, you're welcome back anytime in the studio. We can Absolutely. definitely work on some music next Absolutely. time. Um, as a point of jealousy, I wanted to ask about you getting to be a part of the iconic hip-hop photo at the Lee Statue at Marcus Davis Peters Circle. Um, <laughs> who put together that many artists like how, how quick was it what's the story behind i'm that? sure i'm sure there were there were a few people involved but the person that called me was noah O. and like the vibe i get is that he's generally the one that's going to be like calling the majority of people 
because I, if I'm not mistaken, there was another time they'd done this, like where it was like Strange Matter was closing, mm -hmm. and they took a picture in front of Strange Matter. I don't know. Um, RVA Mag was like they they wanted because th at that time it was like it was like we had the eye, it was like they was gonna take the statue down any moment. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody knew how long it was gonna take, so it seemed like it was gonna go right then. So it was like RVA Mag was like they wanted to do something for Richmond hip hop. But yeah. Shout out to Noah O. Noah O called me, and I know, I think I went out there with Kilroy, Kilroy G. Is he somebody that you met through like Rapidly? Yeah. Yep. Matter of fact, I met him through the Madness tournament. It's crazy. We we did the tournament. I won. Couple days later, he hit me up and was like, "Yo, I'm trying to get in the studio." Now it wasn't like, like boom boom like that, mind you. Um. You know when you do the rap elites, they got the group chat. Yeah, so, there's a lot of trash talked in those yeah, group yeah, chats. Yeah, 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 yeah. The very, the very last rap elite that we had before um, they shut down, or there was supposed to be one. I don't, I don't know if it was supposed, to, was it whether it was supposed to be one they canceled it. Something like that happened, and so we still had the group chat. You know what I'm saying? And in the group chat, I, I made a, 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 a reached out to everybody, and I did this a lot too. That's something else that I do. I reached out I'm like, yo, look, I got the studio. Whoever trying to pull up, come pull up. That's, that's like this, this open, fair challenge to everyone. You know what I'm saying? Generally, most people, actually, some people would instantly respond like, bet, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? And those are the people that usually don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they just don't show up. <laughs> those are the people that usually don't even hit you up. They just responding in the chat. And then... Um, Kilroy hit me up and was like, yo, I might have to take you up on that offer. You know what I'm saying? After the, 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 after we did the battle. So it was like, he seen it, didn't respond. So then it was probably, he took a mental note like, mm -hmm. that's what's up. I might have to hit him up one day. And then we did the battle. A couple of days later, he was like, yo, I'm coming through. And he literally, it was like, it wasn't even two, three days later. We was in my studio and I was, we was talking about the battle. I'm like, yo, how, how you, how does it feel? Like you, you here? We just, you know what I'm saying? He's like, nah, I don't care, man. So that was dope. Yeah. I got that, that. No, I don't want to say that same camera, but I got the Black Magic and and this the six K. And, and, and I got this, that same battery, so it's like it's keep it keep messing with me when I'm looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's way too familiar. Yeah. I'm Alexander and this is Garrett. I'm we're, Garrett. We're honestly smoked. We found out we lived across the street from each other in college, and we were always cooking stuff in the backyard. Fin jerky came into play, and I had a recipe that I had messed around with. We went in, you know, that top spice, you can see it is bold. There's a lot of minced garlic, there's black pepper, there's smoked paprika, there's cayenne, there's garlic. There's all these great, great things in there that you just won't know. It's so textural and so vibrant, and then you bite into it, and it's like, boom, and it just lights you up. And not to be cliche, but we, we made our part with love. We started this because we both ate a lot of beef jerky. We'd go to the grocery store. And we still do. And we, of course we still do. Shout out Three Notch, Brew Notch Brewing, Collab House and Scott's Edition, our Who Smoked All the Porter recipe that was a companion beer to the Mild Child Jerky. And we were gonna try to take that and rummage that into an awesome little holiday flavor for y'all. You type in here RVA, we haven't made the promo code yet, but it will be live by the time this is. Yeah, you are in the future and this promo code is now live. Exactly. So, so if you use promo, car, promo code here RVA, you will get 25% off your entire order. Just had to show that real quick. Oh, Kilroy, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Wonderful. Yo, you've got everything there. Oh, yeah, can you show the camera so we can get a nice shot of that? Because we were just talking about it, you know, so I got that too. What is going on stage with Zaya Queen like and performing the song Same Difference? What's, what's that like for you when you get to be up there with, with somebody who, uh, from my perspective, you love? That's what it looks like from here, you know, <laughs> like, what's that like when you go up on stage and get to share that moment? <laughs> I think it's funny because I, when you ask the question, I started feeling like those tickles and stuff. So it's like that, you know what I mean? Nah, um, it's, it's, I definitely noticed like as a performer, like, it's almost like something's missing if I don't do that, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not just about us, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's about us. <laughs> My bad, bro. From Newport News. <laughs> he getting all excited. He's got butterflies. He don't. <laughs> but nah, it's like 
you know, we we recorded that song 2014, 15. All right, 2015, we recorded that song. And it's like the connection that everybody has with it, you know what I mean? Not just what it means to us. It's like when, when, we, when we perform it in front of new people that I know have never, never heard it, or we perform it, people that have heard it every time we perform, it's like the reaction is, is always authentic and it's always raw. And it brings me back to, you know, like when we made the song and, and it just puts confirmation on, on the emotion that we added to it. And, and we can feel it every time. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes when I'm performing the song, like I'm actually in my performing mind because I'm trying like to really like do a good job, mm -hmm. so to speak. In comparison to other songs, I'm like freestyling while I'm performing. You know what I mean? And it's like... Um, we don't even have to rehearse it generally, you know what I mean? It's like the the feelings there, the emotions always going to be there. And then like the way it's received is always the, the, the best part, you know what I mean? And we got like, we got this pause in the middle of the song. You know what I'm talking about? Like how it pauses and then it comes back up. The pause is like, it's like a reset. So it's like you get two songs in one, you know what I mean? And actually it pauses three times, but from the verses it pauses and it's like, I'll be looking at people in the audience and it's like, just gazing like, yo, I wish I made this song, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm coming over hypothetically for a studio session. Right. This is Ozzy's choice to show me a great time, okay? What's the music that you're playing as I come in? What is uh, the food and or drink? And what strain of cannabis are we, are we rocking out to in our, in our session? The music that's gonna be playing, if I'm being cliche, then I'm gonna be playing our song to the sky. That's just on repeat, whether it's just the beat or, 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 or your hook on repeat or what. So as we as I come in the door, we got theme music. I like that. But but believe it or not, when you come in, it's probably gonna be be nothing because it's like that's part of the build up. Like when you come in, when you come in my studio, it's almost kind almost kind of like this. Yours is like the epitome of it. But that's sweet right there. You see that? Yeah. It's almost kind of like, like you know, except for like when, when I come in, I don't have the lights on. It's like, so it's just like, oh, this is the studio. And then I'm like, yeah. You this is saying? the so studio. The light come on first. And then I got these, these, these um, what do they call them? The, the LED, LED strips, you know what I'm saying? And then like after a while, I might, you know, might be sitting there like, damn, where you, where you had to come from? Or like, how was the ride? And I might ask some BS question like that. And then I'm like, <laughs> mid mid answer now i'm upgrading everything <laughs> and then it's like i'm talking about bud like okay chances are probably you, you you'll smell that that will be the, that would be the you're gonna walk in and you're gonna be like okay this is great i'm getting no work done yeah. tonight you, you, and you're gonna and you just ask me like what what strain like you're not gonna care about the strain because you're gonna smell that it's like probably the best that that, that you've smelt in a while I'll go with that. So we didn't have to talk strands, you know what I'm saying? Like, cool. That's because I don't know anything about them, so it's all fine. You know, with an S, you know what I'm saying? Strands. Multiples. Yeah. Plural. Flavors. We're going to look dead into this camera, and you're going to say, hey, this is OZ, and then you're going to say, watch out for it, and then don't say anything, and then say, coming out on, and then don't say anything, and we'll overdub the blanks when <laughs> if you got something to drop. That's fire. They'd be like, yo, this is OZ, and I got new album coming <laughs> up February. <laughs> yo, this is OZ. And make sure that you check out and keep an eye out for this shit right here because it's coming to you real soon, all right? I also got some other stuff too, but you ain't got to flash that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but nah, seriously though, like, I feel like I'm like, if I'm being honest, I'm like four to six projects behind. 
I could be four to six behind. Behind, meaning like I could have easily had like four to six projects yeah. that I just threw out there and so to speak rushed or just put out because I just want to have a lot of music out or so many different things that I've heard from people. But it's like I started I started recording like seriously later in my career. So like for like the first six years, I was more so an engineer recording other people and then like sneaking my time in in my mind because I wasn't this artist. And then like as I'm listening to my music and shit came together, it was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? And then it's like, I've lost music. I've lost hard drives. There's like songs that I've done that I'll never hear again. You know what I'm saying? Hella books of write, um, lyrics that I've written. So it's like, I'm more in, in the space now of like, if I'm not helping somebody create something, if it's me, then it's like, it's really gotta be some official shit. Like I'm not, I don't, I don't do, I should, I've been thinking about it, but I don't do the freestyle record shit. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's, it's not fun thinking about it. I'm sure it's fun if I did it, but it's not fun thinking about it being an engineer too. Cause I've, I'm coming from the world of having the headphones on, sitting in front of the jump. And then, then trying to rap, and then you got to stop yourself. And it's like doing it yourself. Yeah, you got more control, and it's it's probably could come out better. But it's like the essence of it is so like it's two different brains. Yeah. To to be in the artist, like I, this we I, yo, I literally have had this conversation where it's like I know it's it's pushing a button and turning, but it's me going from one like technical part of my brain to then trying to like feel and emote exactly at, within a ten second span. You keep turning on and off and on and off the, the editing part of the shit when it's like you're not supposed to start editing until after you, you record. So it's like here you are, I'm messing up on my verse, but I'm also like editing it while I'm like trying to you know what I'm saying? It's like so then I'm like punching myself in. Here goes the like, so let me do a punch in. Now I'm really editing, cause now it's like with other artists, they they pay for their time, so it's like you'll come back and skip it and do it later. Right there, you're gonna punch in, and you're gonna fix the punch, and like it's gonna, it has to be right. And then you wasted all your now time. Now you lost creativity, and like, and it's like, damn, I'm not supposed to be punching. What am I doing? Yep. You know. Yo, what I'm yo, I'll punch for you. You punch for me. Yeah. Cause I have the exact same problem. For real. Okay. For real. Well, we've worked that out. I, look at this. This is beneficial. For but me. not like to the freestyle part though. Like if if you know I am hey engineers if you're out there and you want to come work with me i would love it because it's like say having an engineer there and it's like yo pull up another session scratch this song i just want to freestyle some shit you know what i'm saying and then it's like they do it real quick and then they you know it's different when they're you know and then they're like yo that was hot let's keep that versus me saying everything that i'm saying is hot i'm gonna keep everything and then like you know what i'm saying like yeah it's, it's how does it work you know it's really easy to be either overly critical or undercritical of exactly. yourself. Exactly. Exactly. I'm going to definitely, um, I didn't eat none of that on camera, but I'm going to take like half of those with me. Oh, right you don't here. have to. Bro, we're going to give you some. Oh, all right. You, I mean, you could definitely. Yeah, here. Matter of fact, here, oh. here's a nice little gift bag we got for you here, man. Appreciate it, bro. No problem. Yeah, you got some honestly smoked jerky Epic. in there. You got some nice. cake pops. I'm not, I'm not unboxing on camera. No, that's fine. Right. You don't have to. There's a Hero RBA mug. I'm just going to tell everybody what's in there. There's a Hero RBA mug. That's sweet, it. though. He had, this is important. Like, people write OZ. One of my homeboys, you know, on Facebook, you know, like, uh, you can only capitalize the first letter. Yeah. So my O Z is a big O and a little Z. One of my homeboys literally messaged me and he writes a big O dash and a little Z. And I'm just like, oh, come on, bro. It's like, oh, Z. What's up, bro? And it's like, I'm not hype no more. You know what I'm saying? My name, O Z, actually came from friends in high school because they was hyped to see me. So it's like, they're, they're, that's usually them shouting and they're like, oh, Z. And like, they didn't used to be up close like, Yo, OZ. And so, like, I got older, and it was like, that's what people call me. But OZ was, like, shouted. And then I went by um, Oz or Ozzy. Ask me who's on the show today. Who's on the show today? Oh, Z. <laughs> <laughs> I seen that coming. Yeah, sorry. You... I could see the look in your eyes when you were like, okay, I'll ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to do it. That's hilarious. Um... Uh, anybody got any questions? I did. Um, I remember the first time I saw you perform, I think it was at Brambley, and I remember there was three fans who had tie-dye OZ shirts on who were trying to get in, but 
they didn't look like, you know, a typical rap fan. Like, they, I, you know, he's white over there. What? But, but they may have been whiter than you. I know what you're saying, though. I know what you're saying. <laughs> so, like, I just want to know, like, your fan base, it seems to be, like, very broad. And why do you think that is? Like, how is it connecting? I think it's because, like, me... All right, so it's like jobs, different jobs I've worked and like I've I've got to know so many different people and like I'm I feel like it's like kind of like the I don't know I don't know it's hard to explain because I have friends of from all walks of lives and I feel like you know I think my name helps me like keep so many people like remembering me. Because, like, if my name was James, you know what I'm saying, I might have been forgotten. I also got a twin brother, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I have a lot of different things going on to where when I meet people, they're like, yo, I've never met somebody like you. Just like, even if you don't even get to know me, like, my name alone, you know what I'm saying? And then, like, when I start to tell it. So I feel like people, that coupled with the fact that I'm actually a good person, you know what I'm saying? I was trying not to get to that part, but I'm like, I'm, I'm a good person. You know what I'm saying? I got good friends and, and people, like, they don't just befriend me. Like, they keep up with me. I keep up with them. Um, when it comes to my shows, like, like, I reach out, and then it's like when people respond and they're like, give me information, I kind of get into this, like, I'm going to make you come mode. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... I'm just real. Excuse me. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> I was like, there was so many pauses in the song you were talking about the same difference. I was like, we need to add a pause right here. That was a good one. There goes. There, there was a good one. But nah, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I, I've, I've been all over the place too. You know what I'm saying? Like people, they come to my shows. They're coming from all over. They're not just coming from right here. They're coming from you know the seven five seven. Petersburg, Hopewell, Prince George, and that, you know, in a nutshell, there's no real way to answer that without thinking about how, you know, the type of people that come to other people's shows, and I don't pay attention to that. You know what I mean? And speaking of that show, I remember specifically, because you was there. Mm -hmm. you, you was there. You probably had that shirt on. I might have. I only have three shirts. I so remember, this one, a bunch of brown shirts. I remember looking at the gate and like when they wouldn't let people in, there was a whole bunch of OZ shirts on the outside. Yep. In fact, there were some people that watched my set from that never even got to it's come. Because they brought camping chairs too, bro. They were prepared. Yeah, that was crazy. They had camping chairs and OZ shirts. I was like, oh damn, I should have brought a camping chair. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Hey, look, feel free to embarrass me with that that blip. Oh yeah. <laughs> You signed. Yeah, you signed it. It's oh, done, bro. Yeah. It's done, bro. You already gave us permission. You know what's crazy? A joke, a joke about that. When I signed the paper, I was like, yo, the last time I signed a paper like this, it wasn't for something for me. So this is crazy. Well, like, I went to, like, like an uh, event or something like that and we, or, or, or a video shoot. And I signed. It was like an NDR it was non disclosure. Them. It was like the same thing for me, but it wasn't like the video was for me. It was like uh, I was just gonna be in there for like a second or two. So it was like, you know, nah, this maybe, one's about maybe you, I bro. did did just sign my life away. You did. And I should stare at these cameras a little bit more. I mean, yeah, you definitely should because the more you stare at these cameras, the more digital three D mapping of your face that we'll have to create our our three D versions where we put you in rap videos and take over your career. That's sweet. Yeah. I've been looking for something like this for a long time. It's like it's like uh, it's the, it's basically the uh, concept for the new Space Jam with LeBron James. Tight. I am uh, algae rhythm. It's crazy. <laughs> He's like about a girl. I'm packing my little card. <laughs> Funny. I'm gonna deep throat this cake pop. <laughs> That's too funny, yo. Yo, I said that with like so much conviction. <laughs> it was like, I'm not gonna reenact it. Like, 